over the last couple of years. Uh, it's been a lot to endure, but uh, hopefully some luck changes for them. And maybe our next guest, Sixers head coach Brett Brown, can bring them some luck. He will represent them at the NBA Draft Lottery. Coach, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. You got it. And uh, obviously, uh, there's been a, a long couple of years, and uh, you guys are going to go through the draft lottery process again, and uh, you will be there this time. And does it does it all feel different this time? Does it feel like uh, this one is leading uh, to someplace a little faster? I think I think it does. I think when you look at the uh, the abundance of picks that we have in this year's draft, I think when you listen to ownership um, talk about our new direction in regards to legitimately looking looking at free agents. Uh, those types of things, I, I do feel like it has a different flavor to it this year. So you will represent the team at the NBA Draft Lottery. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people would look at it and say, you got to get this number one pick. It's been three tra- tries and they haven't got it yet. Do you feel that it is imperative to be the number one or number two in one of those top two spots this time around? Is that something that is very important? I mean, I, I do not like to use uh, that word imperative. Obviously, you know, our goal would be to get the first pick. Uh, I think imperative is probably too too harsh, a little too dramatic. I think that when you look at we have a legitimate three picks in the first round and uh, possibly four, you know, with the, with the Lakers situation, all over the place, you just can't help but get excited that somehow, some way, we're going to make this work, and it will be a positive night. Brett Brown's with us. Uh, Coach, when you see what's happening at your position around the league, uh, Frank Vogel, uh, Jaeger out there in Memphis, I mean, is it discouraging to see winning guys losing their jobs like this? Well, well it is, and, you know, it would be – it would be easy to say, well, that's pro sport and that's the nature of our industry. What I really think is when you hear so many people cry about not building a, cr- a culture when they, you know, un- don't understand how you can't try to find uh, more of a winning organization that you just can't underestimate the importance of continuity. You know, I came from a place that the head coach has been there for 20 years, the general manager has been there for almost 20 years. He was recently named Executive of the Year. And, and always, all over the world, it's no different different than, than most professional sports. I don't think you can associate legitimate culture with some, without mentioning, mentioning some level of continuity. And so to learn of, you know, Dave Yeager or Frank Vogel, two excellent coaches, as you said, wing coaches, that their efforts just weren't even then good enough I think it's disturbing when people then, you know, try to seek some level of culture when they can't find consistency themselves. Now, Coach, uh, you know, with the new regime, have you know, is winning something they're going to start uh, looking at now when, when, you know, obviously you saw winning coaches lose their job. Are they going to say, Coach, you get the two-year extension, but we want to start to see some wins now. Is that something that has been uh, portrayed to you? You know, it, it hasn't, I think. And it doesn't have to be. You know, you, you, you understand. I'm, I'm the son of a coach. I've been doing this for a long time. You understand that our direction is a little bit different going into next year. I think that all of us understand that uh, even with that new direction, you're not going to just roll out a cluster of 20-year-olds, even if they are high draft picks, and expect to pounce on the NBA. It's obviously a, an extremely well-coached competitive league. I feel like once we understand what our roster looks like, you know, where our draft picks have landed, we can all step back and and honestly assess, you know, this is the new direction. These are fair expectations. I feel like the bottom line is the city has endured a, an amazing sort of three runs. I'm still blown away, Mike, when you go into the Wells Fargo Arena and you got 19,000 passionate Philadelphia fans truly, you know, cheering on and being behind a bunch of 20-year-olds and being supportive. So all over the place, you feel a responsibility to deliver to the city and especially to our fans. A couple of years ago, Coach Brett Brown is with us. You guys drafted two guys in the first round. We've never seen them. 
Uh, any update on Sarge and Embiid and uh, when or the possibility of seeing one or either one of those guys sooner than later? Well, Joel has been uh, excellent in regards to his professionalism, uh, his attention to detail with all the, you can't imagine the, the minute pieces to what it really takes to go back on to a court and play NBA basketball again after having sat out now for two years. And so whether it's diet, whether it's prehab, rehab, whether it's doing cardiovascular work, whether it's doing a slow progression of work on a court, all over the place. You know, he came back from the Middle East. There was a location in, in Qatar and in Doha, Qatar, one of the world's uh, recognized core science facilities that he spent almost a month at uh, in, 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 in March. I feel like, uh, you know, there's just not much more he can do. He's got a stable around him that's been excellent. So his, his path has been great. We look forward to bringing him more on the court, playing against other people more competitively. Um, when you look at Dario Saric's progression over the past few years, you know, you can't help but look back and look at his improvement in his three-point shot. He's excited, I think, to come over. There still will be obvious contract negotiations that are eminent, but I think the words that, that come out of his mouth give us all hope in that he looks forward to being a 76 very soon. Uh, are you planning on, uh, did I see that you and uh, Brian Colangelo are going to meet with him over, uh, you taking a, a flight over there? That, that is the tentative plan right now. We're trying to piece the next month together uh, as we speak. In another few days, we'll be going out to Chicago for the uh, pre-draft workouts. Um, there has been some travel restrictions to Turkey uh, recently that we're aware of. Uh, somehow, some way, our hope is to go uh, to Istanbul like I did last year and you know, sit down with him and talk to him and watch him play. Um, there's a lot of moving parts as we as we talk uh, all over the place with the assessment of the draft, the assessment of even some of our later draft picks, uh, along with the plan to uh, go visit Dario. Uh, Sixers coach Brett Brown. Coach, do you feel now that this is an attractive place for free agents, even with all the young players, knowing you got the building? Is that opening for – is that going to be open for training camp, the new building in Camden? I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's your question, though, is timely. I'm, I'm in a car as as we talk. I've just come back from uh, from the, the new practice site. You know, you stick your head in there every so often, and you just can't believe how beautiful and more importantly functional it's truly going to be. You know, you get you get flashbacks of my days in San Antonio, where in the summertime you had a a winner's court and a loser's court. People from all over America would come you know, just to compete with other pros. It was highly professional. They know they would be looked out for. This facility that we're talking about will be the best in the NBA. I believe we're last. We always said if we're going to be last, we better be best. <laughs> and best we will be. And it's, it's, it's excitement all over the place uh, to get in there. Our hope is to get in there for training camp at the end of uh, September, the first part of October. And, uh, I know that whether it's a week early, a week later, the bottom line is it's ours, and it's just very, very attractive. So that being said, you know, with all the assets, the picks, the guys, the talent, and everything, is that sellable to a free agent in this time frame that maybe wants to win today? Is that something you can say, look, when you're getting a little older, our guys are going to be hitting their prime, and you won't have to carry her as much. If you can be with us for a year or two and all this – do you think that's sellable this off season? I think it is. I think that we all should, you know, recognize, well, what level does that mean of a free agent? I think we, we should be most um, aware that how can it not be? You know, when you start looking at the abundance of draft picks, when people really start to look at Joel Embiid and understand the current players that we have, you know, we're still proud of, 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 you know, what's going to happen with, uh, with our current roster, the retention of, of some of our players that we already have all over the place, I think you're going to see free agents start to pay attention to the 76ers program, whether it's a practice facility, whether it's draft picks, whether it's Joel, whether it's our current players, and, and recognize like we do 
that the program, without a doubt, is really, I think, pointing in a direction that's unusual when you look at the other young programs around the NBA. Brett Brown's with us here, and uh, the NBA Draft Lottery is the 17th, the 23rd of June. Uh, I don't know how much research or stuff you've done on the draft, but uh, anybody stick out, guys that you're looking forward to seeing at the Combine? Well, one of the one of the difficulties when you speak to the media, the NBA rules are so strict you're not able to discuss names. I, I will tell you that this is uh, going to be what my 16th NBA draft, and going to going to Chicago and going through. I really like the personal uh, meetings where you can sit down with somebody in a classroom and you know ask different questions, show different things on videotape have them go up and point and explain what they would have done or what they were thinking in an actual game that they had played, along with, you know, the physical activities when you watch somebody jump or, you know, run for 40 yards or, you know, get on a court and actually play. Um, There's a lot going on in Chicago. We have a lot of picks. We're excited to, as a staff, I'll be going with Brian and some other people in the front office to just bunker in and dig in in the next few days, leaving on Tuesday and coming back on Friday. And it is sort of the first step in this uh, in this uh, new evolution of trying to grow our team for the 2016-17 season. Well, Coach, uh, you know, uh, while we got you, I, I, are you watching the playoffs? I know your uh, former guys, the Spurs, uh, that's a great series going on there. By the way, as we're talking here, uh, good to see Dave Yeager get a job in Sacramento. So fired one job the next. So good job, uh, good uh, good to see a good guy get a job there. But uh, are you watching the yeah. playoffs uh, you know, at all? I think, yeah, no. I, I uh, you broke up in me a little bit, Mike. I heard I heard mo- most of your question. The the Dave Yeager bouncing back, I think, just reconfirms what the league thinks of him as a coach. I mean, it took what forty eight hours for him to get reemployed. Um, the playoffs are unbelievable. Uh, I remind our guys all the time that it's a different sport. Watching the playoffs in May and June is different than watching NBA basketball in February. And it's stuff that we all can learn from, highly competitive, highly skilled, lots of shot makers. Uh, It's a fantastic time of year right now for our game. Sure is, uh, and we'll see uh, the uh, the uh, Warriors tonight against Portland. Uh, Portland wins that game, so exciting there. I'm really into the Oklahoma City San Antonio series. I think that was great. Durant last night was unbelievable. If you could find one of those guys in the draft, that would be fun, right? <laughs> how about uh, how about that game? You know, I'm looking at it, and I remember not so long ago sitting in a in a room wondering if we should, you know, trade George Hill for this young kid, Kawhi Leonard. And George Hill was a heck of a player. I mean, that was uh, somebody that we had grown for a few years. And, you know, when you just look at different decisions that can, you know, recalibrate a program, point the needle in a different direction, that Durant, that Durant drafting, you know, Odin went ahead of him. Yeah. Somebody took Greg Odin, and there's Kevin Durant. So that series particularly is a fantastic series and a lot to be learned as it relates to sometimes the luck of a draft as well as selection well we hope you bring us luck uh and one of those top two slots i won't be greedy one or two that's all i'm looking for i think a lot of sixer fans would be happy with that uh i I don't know get your opinion do you even care if you get that laker pick does it matter to you or is the three uh an embarrassment of riches enough no i'm greedy i i I want the laker pick (laughs) i I want them I, i want them all and, uh, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that. I think, I think that what's interesting to me is when you really start to pay attention to the numbers. You know, you go, I've done a few interviews, and it's easy to say you go from sort of being a math teacher when you look at the probabilities of each of the position and to trying to find some level of good luck. You know, everybody wants a good luck charm, but you look at the probability of the different picks, and we all can get a better assessment of how difficult it is you know to go get that first pick that's fact and uh hopefully somewhere out there our luck will turn from the previous drafts but in any case we all feel great that we're in a fantastic position with the multiple picks that we do have all right coach uh well we know you're busy and we appreciate the time as always good luck on the 17th and obviously bring uh the sixers some luck when you're sitting there you got it thanks for having me